In this video, we're going to talk about three different ways that we can measure supply chain performance. Okay, measure supply chain performance. And to do that, we are going to go over assets committed to inventory, inventory turns, and weeks of supply. So each three of these metrics are good for measuring how your supply chain is performing. Now there's lots of other metrics that you could include, but these are some of the three main metrics that we do to monitor supply chain performance. So assets committed to inventory is simply just your percentage invested in inventory, and that equals your average inventory investment divided by total assets multiplied by 100, and that's going to give you your percentage invested in inventory. For inventory turns or your inventory turnover metric, you're going to take your cost of goods sold divided by your inventory investment. And then for weeks of supply, you're going to take your inventory investment, you're going to divide that by the annual cost of goods sold divided by 52 weeks. Okay, divided by 52 weeks. So in general, with these three different uh, metrics that we're looking at, with assets committed to inventory, in general, a smaller number is better. Okay, you want to have less inventory committed to your total assets. Okay, so in general, a smaller number is better. With inventory turns, in general, a higher number is better. You want to be turning over your inventory more often. You're getting new inventory in, you're selling it, it's not sitting on the shelves for very long, your cash is freed up to spend on other inventory investments that you so choose, so you don't have a whole bunch of inventory sitting there, so therefore a higher inventory turn number is better. With weeks of supply, in general, you want a lower number as well, because again, if you've got a half a year's worth of inventory on hand, it means you've used the, uh, company cash to buy inventory, and you probably don't want that much. Uh, in normal times, in normal business settings, you want a lower amount of weeks of supply on hand, you want to turn that inventory over more often. So in general, weeks of supply, you want a lower number and that is better. So th those are the three um, metrics that we're going to look at uh, when measuring supply chain performance. So our very first one is um, assets committed to inventory. Okay, so our assets committed to inventory. And so let's use Home Depot as our example. Home Depot management wishes to track its inventory investment as one of its performance measures. Recently, Home Depot had 11.4 billion invested in inventory and their total assets were 44.4 billion. So real quickly, uh, before we uh, get into this easy solution, um, we need to understand what an asset is. Okay, what is an actually an asset? So an asset is something that has value to an organization, a person, uh, or a country. It's something they have that has future use for sale or future benefits. So it has some kind of value tied to it. Assets are on a company balance sheet and they are, they are bought to increase or create value for that firm. So when you think about what different assets could be, uh, cash is obviously an asset, but things like buildings, inventory, vehicles, furniture, um, investments that the firm has made, these are all considered assets. So when you think about the amount committed to inventory, um, that's why you want a lower number because generally many organizations want to have other assets. They want to have more buildings. They want to have uh, more cash. They want to have more investments. They want to have less of their money tied up in inventory. So that's why in general, having a lower percentage invested in inventory is generally a good thing. So back to Home Depot. So Home Depot has 11.4 billion invested in inventory when you divide that by their total assets of 44.4 billion, that gives them the percentage invested in inventory of 25.7%. So let's see how Home Depot compares to other um, uh, uh, industries. So if you look on the left of the screen, you can see we've got manufacturers, wholesalers, restaurants, retail, and how much they generally have uh, tied up uh, in inventory versus their total assets. So a manufacturer will have generally around 15% and Toyota is going to have about 5%. So Toyota is a top performer. They have less inventory versus many other manufacturers by about 10%. So they are using their cash for other things. Restaurants, you can see, generally don't have a whole lot of inventory. 
in general, a restaurant's only going to have about 3% of their inventory tied up versus their assets. So a normal restaurant's about 3%. McDonald's is only at 0.05%, less than 1% of all of McDonald's assets is tied up in inventory. So that makes sense, right? Because we've all heard that McDonald's is one of the largest real estate holding companies in the world with almost 30 billion in real estate value. So um, having less than 1% uh, of inventory of lettuce and tomatoes and cheese that, you know, it makes a lot of sense mathematically um, why they have less assets committed to inventory. And then uh, retail, you can see Home Depot, we just calculated they were at 25.7 versus um, most retailers who are about 28%. Um, retail is, it's a really delicate balance. They've got to have inventory for when people walk in the store. Okay, you have to have the inventory if you're a retail store, but you don't want to have too much inventory or you don't have the cash freed up to go and purchase other things or new inventory. So now let's calculate inventory turns. Um, inventory turns is a measure of how quickly a company sells its inventory. A low inventory turn number uh, implies weak sales, possibly excess inventory or overstocking. Um, it may indicate a problem with the goods being offered, that people don't like them, which is why you're not turning over your inventory very fast. Uh, and so you've probably heard the example by before about fast fashion companies like H&M uh, or Zara and how they intentionally don't make huge production runs. They limit the amount of products that they have um, per production run. And when they run out, they run out. Right. And so people are more likely to go back into their stores because they're going to have newer products being delivered once that old inventory is depleted. So it is their uh, it is their strategy to not have a whole lot of inventory because then they can get new products delivered uh, that excite the customers. You're going into those stores more frequently than others that have low inventory turns because you want to see what new products they have on the shelves. So and back in my world in manufacturing, we wanted to one of our measures with inventory was inventory turns. It was very critical to us because we wanted um, to free up our cash to go buy a new inventory. And it also told us how well we were doing fulfilling all of our shortages. Um, you cannot ship a finished good unit if all of your raw materials are not there. So one shortage can hold up an entire shipment. So by having that shortage fulfilled, you actually are, uh, by bringing in that inventory, you can now manufacture something ship out that finished good, and that's helping to improve your inventory because you're lowering your inventory when you ship something out. So having a higher inventory turn is a good metric to see the health of the business, how you're doing in supply chain, how you're doing in operations, and you want a higher inventory turn. So to calculate inventory turnover, you're simply gonna take your cost of goods sold divided by your inventory investment. And for PepsiCo, like this example, you're going to take $14.2 billion divided by your total inventory investment of 1.69 billion, and that gives you 8.4 inventory turns per year. Okay, so 8.4 inventory turns per year. So let's look at a couple examples again. You can see that Home Depot is turning over their inventory five times per year. They're a retail store, right? So if you think about that, that makes, uh, that makes sense. There's 12 months per year. Uh, they have five inventory turns per year. It means they're they're turning over their inventory every nine or ten weeks or so, um, and for them maybe it's not critical. Lumber doesn't expire, right? Tiles don't go obsolete in nine weeks. So if they have slower inventory turns, it's not it's not detrimental to their business. Take McDonald's though. McDonald's has 112 inventory turns per year. So mathematically, if you think that there's 365 days per year and they're turning over their inventory 112 times. That means that every three to four days, their inventory is turning over. And that makes sense too, right? They can't keep the lettuce and the tomatoes and the bread and all of that in stock for very long before it expires. So they want an extremely high inventory turnover number. So hopefully that makes sense about the different uh, the differences between, you know, someone like Home Depot, who's going to have a lower inventory turn number versus a restaurant like McDonald's that's going to have that high inventory turn uh, number of 112. So. These are uh, a couple examples of annual inventory turnover. Okay, now let's calculate weeks of supply. Okay, and we'll use PepsiCo again. So once again, uh, they've got 32.5 billion in net revenue. Their cost of goods sold are 14.2, and their total inventory investment is 1.69 billion. To calculate the weeks of supply, you merely take your inventory investment over your annual cost of goods sold divided by 52 weeks. 
and that's going to give you 6.9, 6.19 weeks of supply on hand at PepsiCo. Okay, 6.9, uh, 6.19 weeks of inventory uh, for PepsiCo. Now, another thing you can do when you calculate out the weeks of supply, this is a little trick, uh, you can uh, take 52 weeks in a year, you can divide it by 6.19, and if you were to do that, you're going to get 8.4. Since this is PepsiCo and we just did the example on how to calculate inventory turns, 52 weeks divided by 6.19 weeks gives you the same exact answer of 8.4 inventory turns per year. So you can do that too um, if you want to calculate out your weeks of supply or your inventory turns. So, all right, for this one, when calculating the weeks of supply, make sure that you just don't do inventory investment divided by annual cost of goods sold. Make sure you take the 52 weeks into consideration because you're trying to calculate weeks of supply. And that's it. Uh, in this uh, video, we have uh, now learned to calculate three different uh, supply chain metrics, uh, which is weeks of supply, inventory turns, and assets committed to inventory.